Hello and welcome back to Have You Heard, um, the social media podcast from us here at The Social Shepherd. Uh, my name's Zoe, I'm one of the co-founders and managing director and I'm joined by... Lucy! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Lucy's one of our influencer, well, our only influencer marketing director here at the agency. Yeah, yeah. And today um, we have been tasked with talking about influencer marketing and Black Friday. Mm -hmm. Firstly, I think this podcast is going out at the end of September. So I'm not going to lie, if you're listening to this and you own a brand or you work for a brand and you have not nailed down your Black Friday strategy, get out a piece of paper right now, like right this second sort it out. and get it done because, um, yeah, you, you need to sort of be ahead of the curve. And realistically, the majority of businesses that are doing it correctly will have started implementing um, a strategy to build up um, their reach that they're getting on social to sort of... Um, build up brand familiarity, which is your new favorite. That's my phrase. <laughs> um, term. And yeah, so pe people are already sort of going, we tend to start conversations with clients about Black Friday in February. So yeah, PSA, if you haven't started, mm -hmm. get started quickly. Um, but today we're going to talk about influencers and influencers can serve Black Friday in or just peak gifting season in general in a multitude of ways and I think that sometimes it's one of those channels where people don't really know where to start whenever mm -hmm. they get with it you know paid it it can be quite logical to say okay well we need to build brand awareness here and then we're going to swap to conversion here and it can be it's not simple but it's easier to kind of muddy your way through the strategy there um but with influencer there's just a multitude of ways that they can sort of impact so i think if we maybe split this up into how to utilize influencers well how would you suggest a brand comes to you if someone came to you and said i want influencers to support my black friday strategy where would you suggest they can give them this value so i guess with influencers it's all about treating them as you're using their audience and you're having an influence on their particular audience. So first and foremost, as kind of already touched upon, yeah, it's all about building up that brand familiarity sooner rather than later. So your brand awareness content, your engagement based content where you're engaging said audience and you're kind of making them aware of what product or service you have to offer, get that out there sooner rather than later. You know, really it's a roundabout you know, August, September time that you want to be yeah. doing that, if not sooner, and just kind of building that up over a period of time. But then ultimately, um, how influencers in particular have been adapting their approach for Black Friday in more recent years is that when it comes to that Black Friday day or Cyber Monday, that whole Cyber Week, whatever it might be, um, typically what they will be tending to do is uh, they will feature your product or service in a roundup of their Black Friday recommendations or their gifting recommendations um, and kind of promoting the best discounts and so on and so forth. So that's typically where they will, how they will feature you um, as opposed to, uh, you know, creating very like bespoke, you know, glossy, um, you know, super like high production kind of content, um, they're not going to be doing that around that particular period. No, and I think the other thing to note is that if you don't do what you suggested in your August, September and build up that brand familiarity, if you just have an influencer post on Black Friday, firstly, it's going to be so much more expensive because social uh -huh. is just saturated during that time. And like even on paid, we CPMs will skyrocket and then they'll come back down again. But it's also going to be really inauthentic to the people that are following those influencers. And so, yes, you may get some good results off the back of it, from, but from a longer term perspective, it, it just doesn't make sense. And you'll get better results if you focus the like more rich, style content earlier on in the year mm -hmm. and ideally you have them post about it consistently throughout the For year sure. and then whenever it comes to Black Friday it's almost like their audience is like oh I know that influencer has worked with that brand they might have an additional discount code for Black Friday Precisely. or I'll go and speak to them about mm -hmm. this industry or something I'm going to look at so I think the worst thing and we get a lot of people coming to us being like we've never done influencers properly before we want to test it for Black Friday like one campaign in November and we're like 
I mean, you can do that if you want to, and um, you know, we'll do something that's going to be performance driven. That's going to give you the best mm-hmm. possible results. But really we need to stop looking at influencers as like a switch on switch off. Um, it should be treated as more of an ambassador approach. A hundred percent. And so the kind of content formats that you might want to be negotiating um, with influencers around that particular time is more your direct response style content. And that's usually going to be seen through Instagram stories where Mm -hmm. you can share a link and their audience can click through and everything. And you can track it through kind of um, link clicks, traffic to website sessions, so on and so forth, like those kind of Mm -hmm. metrics and everything, as opposed to how much reach did we get or how many engagements did we get and so on and so forth. So that's what we would typically expect to see from those particular influencer collaborations around Black Friday. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the sooner you get started with it, the yeah. better, um, because it's all about ensuring that said influencer's audience is uh, like genuinely feels like said influencer that they really admire and yeah. they like following truly advocates for that brand or mm-hmm. that product or whatever it might be so when it comes to that particular time it's it just trusted as well exactly and i think the other thing so when we did our internal black friday session we talked about tailoring your organic strategy to sort of aid reach in the earlier part of the year Mm -hmm. and then we can go down into like you said really maximizing those more direct response metrics across Mm -hmm. organic and influencer so another thing that we could suggest would be If you are in the position to be able to work with influencers throughout the year or even, you know, August, September, a little bit of October too, before you get into sort of peak season, try and focus their content output on those reach driving types Mm -hmm. of content. So your reels, your TikToks, feed posts potentially, but as we know, reels aid more discoverability on the platform and then flip that to your direct response. So your story outputs and things like that. So it's, it's not just about going, we want to work with influencers here and here it's going, okay, well, what are they physically posting and how does that aid my overall sort of strategy? Yeah, precisely. And another thing you could explore, and this is more of a longer term thing is, um, working with influencers on a affiliate basis. So that's mm-hmm. where they'll earn a small amount of commission from every sale or every result they, they mm-hmm. drive it is typically a sale. Um, so it will be more attractive to them um, as well, if you, the brand, have a really attractive offer that can be promoted during Black Friday. Yeah. So if you've got 20% off, 25% off, something along those kinds of lines, if not more, um, that will only encourage them to be promoting the yeah. fact that you've got that and then they can share that through an affiliate link and then hopefully kind of drive as many sales as possible. And it, yeah. it aids them as well. And again, that kind of ties back to what we were saying around, it's all about building up that awareness yeah. and engaging their audience over a longer period of time to then have that hard hitting kind of direct response message. Yeah, and equally influencers are going to give you better rates if you work with them over a longer period of time. Whereas if you go to them and say, we want you to post on Black Friday, they're going to go, well, I've got 20 other brands trying Mm -hmm. to get me to post. So they're going to hike up their prices and it's just not going to be as cost effective for you. Whereas if you're a brand that they've worked with, they love the product, Mm -hmm. longer term, they're they're going to be preferred towards you. Like, Like you said, influencer marketing really is about building relationships and I think that's the part that we do really well for Mm -hmm. clients is that we keep the relationships on their behalf um flip side of it and I want to I know this podcast is about influencer marketing and we try and segment the two quite clear-cut content creators can actually form a really strong part of your content output Mm -hmm. for Black Friday particularly when we're talking about paid media and on platforms such as TikTok, where they prefer that UGC native style content and that will perform better on a ROAS, on a click-through rate basis um, than like your higher quality um, stuff will. So if brands aren't already, we would suggest that they have a content creator strategy where they're utilizing content creators as part of their content output. Mm-hmm. And then they're briefing them in with narratives that are going to work from a performance perspective. Yeah, precisely. So yeah, we can brief our content creators that we work with um, to produce a variety of content. So whether it's organ- organic only content or whether it's multi-purpose content or paid specific content, and it will be briefed very specifically to aid whatever output it is that it's going out on. So we can work with content creators who um, 
produce uh you know best performing paid media style UGC content um that can be used within like your paid your paid social strategy and activity um so it could be you know your unboxings or it could be product testimonials and things like that um that can then be used within your paid media yeah. activity during that particular time and i think half of the issue with that is is that sometimes you'll see brands and they've tried to do it but they've done it just really poorly and mm-hmm. it's so obviously so salesy and i think whenever you get around to something like tiktok it has to be so authentic so a piece of advice we would always give is we'll brief and we'll give them like clear points that they need to hit but it has to be authentic and you can just set, tell so much whenever you see an ad pop up and it's an influencer or a content creator and they'll be like so I tried out this and it's got mm-hmm. like a VO, VO on it over this like beautifully shot video and it's just you'll spend so much more money producing that style of content than you will on a content creator just speaking really cringely but like from the heart like Mm -hmm. how they actually make how actually they actually think about the product um it'll perform so much better so I think we're entering into a time where like brands kind of just need to be a little bit looser on like their brand guidelines and stuff like that and really be clever and investigative and more creative whenever Mm -hmm. they're testing what types of of content performs from that perspective um but yeah in short just get ready and hurry up if you haven't already (laughs) yeah precisely (laughs) cool okay well thank you for listening um and yeah there's gonna be a little series going out about black friday um if it's not already out so make sure to watch the rest of the podcasts